Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going wonderful. Welcome to my countdown to Christmas series for 2021. We're picking up from last year, so this will be card number 21 and we're going to use a stamp set from Photoplay. It is called Christmas Cookies and I think it's just so sweet. It's so much fun. Um, it does have a little milk container with some, a straw, a few sentiments, and lots of cookies that are layerable, which is really nice. Um, back side of your package will have inspiration and then there is a coordinating die set that i picked up to go with it it's a large six by eight stamp set guys and i'll link it down below but we are going to do lots of stamping we're going to open this up and i'm going to bring in my misty um, we're going to stamp on different card stocks with um, different inks um, i do want to do a little bit of layering so we're going to start off by grabbing our cookies we're taking the bell the snowflake Actually, not the snowflake. Let's take the bell, the tree, and the candy cane. We're going to treat our white cardstock with my anti static powder tool and ink up our images with Versamark ink. For these cookies here, we're going to heat emboss. So let's ink these up and stamp these. I'm going to go over these with my white embossing powder. Um, I want, I'm using white because I wanted it to look like frosting. And this set is actually a set that we're going to layer on top of our base cookie. So let's grab our embossing powder and we'll just add it over the top. It's kind of hard to see with the white on white. Um, but we'll set this aside and do a little bit more stamping. Next we're going to stamp our snowflake, but this time we're going to stamp it on craft card stock. So I'm treating this as well with my anti-static powder tool and ink up with our snowflake with our Versamark ink, our watermark ink. And we'll stamp that and I'll cover this with white embossing powder also. I love white embossing powder on craft. I just think it looks really nice and it does remind me of frosting. So <laughs> those are good to go. Now I have another piece of white card stock and for this one we're going to stamp our milk um, jar and then also our straw. I want to scoot them over together just a little bit more. Ink these up with memento ink and then we'll stamp this. Um, I scooted them together a little bit more because I do want to stamp one more straw. So I'll just clean off my milk cart and put that back. Or not even a carton, milk jar. <laughs> and then we'll, um, instead of scooting over our stamp, we'll scoot over our paper. And we have enough room to put it right next to the straw that we just stamped. Sometimes these thinner shapes are a little bit harder to hold um, their straight line. So rather than just removing my stamp, I thought it'd be easier to move the paper. <laughs> and speaking of paper, you'll see me using a lot of um, different size and shapes of white cardstock. Um, my scrap paper drawer is getting pretty full. So instead of pulling out a white panel, I'm taking my scraps. So that's why you see all these odd shapes <laughs> of cardstock. We're going to do a little bit more stamping, but this time we're going to use the base of the cookies. So we have the bell, the candy cane, we have our snowflake, and then we'll grab our Christmas tree, kind of make a little bit of room. And rather than using black ink, I thought we would use Memento Rich Cocoa ink to stamp the base of the cookies. This is just going to give more of a cookie look versus that harsh black line. Um, I think the, the brown ink is just going to give it a little more cookie look. <laughs> Burnt edge, I guess. <laughs> now, while we have this panel in here, I'm going to wipe down my, and put down my, put back my base cookies and stamp the little heart that's in the stamp set. There's actually two hearts. One's an outline, one's a solid one. I stamped the outline on that same panel. Okay, let's clean off this, put our misty aside, grab our heat gun. We're going to melt the embossing powder on our snowflake panel and then also I already melted it on our cookie panel there. The cookie and snowflake we are actually going to fussy cut out to the edge, um, but the cookie and the milk containers we're going to color in. So while I color, I'll play some music for you guys and then when I'm done coloring, I will catch back.
Okay, coloring is all done now. So next I have these little um, alcohol prep pads. Um, I use them for cleaning my Copic markers, but when I color with Copic over embossed areas, it's it cleans up my edges if I lightly go over the embossed area um, of my colored air, um, my colored stamped images. It just removes the ink basically and I, I wanted to keep it white to keep it looking like frosting. <laughs> so that's what I did with that. I just slightly went over my embossed area on my stamped images. Now we're going to line up all of our um, coordinating dies and again the snowflake and then the alcohol um, marker cookies, the Copic colored cookies, we're going to fussy cut all the way to the edge. I want to go ahead and add a little dimension to the cookie. So if I go to the edge and we're going to do a little layering with that. Once everything is die cut, we'll punch these out and we have all of our little elements. Now when I did fussy cut out my snowflake, I'm not really happy with the way it turned out. I might not use that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I am going to go, I was going to cut a slit on the top of my milk jar, but decided um, to just crisscross it and we'll put it behind the milk jar. I think that's going to look a lot nicer. So let's grab our tape runner. We're going to add a little adhesive, do a little crisscrossing here, add a little more adhesive, and then we'll put our milk jar right on top. So we have a couple straws hanging out. Now the little red heart, I'm going to, I'm not going to adhere this just yet, but I am going to add a foam square behind it. So this is ready to go. And then we're going to take some small strips a foam adhesive and pop up all of our colored cook portion cookies that we fussy cut and then put those on our die cut cookie bases. We're going to need thin strips for the candy cane here. So we'll just add a couple. I love the way this looks because they actually look like um, the width of a cookie. I think they look so sweet. Okay. This is going to go layered and you'll notice that when I did do coloring around the outline piece, I didn't go all the way in the center because the cookie's just going to cover it anyway. But there is our little dimensional cookie. Love the way they're turning out. I love the softness of them too. We're going to add foam adhesive behind the bell and just continue on be with the tree and then the snowflake also. So our cookies are good to go. Now after we have this done, we're going to go ahead and I'm, I'm thinking I, I like the heart, but I think we're going to stamp one more heart. Um, I had an idea. I do want to put a little bow with twine around the, the neck of our milk jar. And I've seen before where they have hearts attached to the end of strings. So this was a hindsight. So I just stamped and colored in and die cut out another heart using the same pinks that I use for my cookies. And then we're going to do that. So let's, um, let's prepare that. <laughs> now, before we assemble, I am going to take this little swirly die. This is actually from my party cupcake pocket die set. I like the frosting swirl of it and I die cut out three of these. Um, we're going to layer all three of these today together, just connecting them and it creates a real nice frosting look. I was connecting them end to end, but instead I decided to overlap one loop. So I overlapped the one loop on um, the end and then we'll do this end here too. And it, it was still the perfect width for my panel here. So we have a little frosting like that. Okay, I like that for gingerbread too. <laughs> okay, now we have a panel that measures four inches by five and a quarter. I'm bringing in some distressed oxide ink. This is tumble glass. We're gonna take our blending brush I have um, um, darker blue ink in, so I'm just wiping off the ink. And then we're going to do a little shading over the bot. well actually the top of our panel, but I'm going to end up flipping it around. I wanted my little frosting piece that we just put together to stand out in the background. So to do that, I'm just adding a little bit of blue so you can actually see the right frosting. It actually creates a real soft look. So I'm going about halfway up kind of a dome shaping it and then we'll flip it around and then add our frosting to the very bottom. We're going to go up about half of an inch from the base of that panel and our little loopies are going to overhang and I don't mind it because um, it will still fit on the card front. We can see how it stands out against that blue. 
and I like it. <laughs> okay, after we have this done, we are gonna go ahead and grab our milk container. I'm gonna take some twine. We're gonna just trim down a small piece and then I'm going to loop it around the neck of our milk jar here. And then I'll tie a knot to the right, almost like it's overhanging. And then I'm not, and then we'll tie the bow once it's secured to our panel here, but I do want to get my, my twine on there. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and let's add some foam adhesive behind here. So everything has foam adhesive. So we're ready to go, but I do want to stamp my sentiment. Um, before we stamp it, I kind of want to do a little placement. I need some thin strips for the straws up here. Okay. Now, this I know is going to go towards the right, and then we need to place our little cookies here. We're going to put our cookies towards the bottom here. And I'm not sure, just kind of playing around. This is where I decide not to use my snowflake. I prefer the colorful cookies versus the snowflake. It, the snowflakes looks really nice with a craft card stock, but it just kind of threw everything off. And I think three cookies is the perfect amount. For my sentiment in the stamp set, there is one that says Cookies for Santa. I'm stamping that with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And once I have this stamped, we can go ahead and remove the release paper off of the rest of these and then tack them down to our panel. We'll go ahead and scoot this down a little bit. And we'll go ahead and do the same. This cookie is going to overhang on my milk jar, so I have to add one piece of foam adhesive behind it. But the others I just glued down with my tape runner. I went ahead and tied a bow with my twine, and then while the tails of the twine are still there, I'm going to tack down these little hearts. And remember, we already put foam adhesive behind them, so they're ready to go. Just kind of playing around with the placement of the bow here. We'll add our pink one. Kind of placing a little bit wonky. I think we need it. I think our red heart's a little too straight, so we're gonna turn it just a little bit, and then I'll just use my scissors and leave a little overhanging um, underneath the hearts, and then that helps tack down your bow and gives a nice little look too. <laughs> now, after we have this done, I'm gonna go ahead and take my corner rounder. I'm gonna use the half inch side and round the corners on the top of this panel. And then we're going to bring in our card base. We're going to, instead of add, since there's a lot of bulk on here, so in, we're going, instead of adding our adhesive to the back of our panel, we'll just add it to our card base. And then once this is centered, I'm going to bring back my corner rounder. And then we'll just round the top of those corners on our card base. Sometimes having um, rounded corners is nice, not just a typical square card. <laughs> I sometimes always forget about my corner rounder. Okay, now I'm gonna highlight our little hearts. This just gives them a little added dimension, especially when there's a lot of white area in our background. And then I forgot to remove the release paper off of our foam tape behind the straws. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna add some frosting. <laughs> this, These are Nouveau Crystal Drops in Simply White. There's dotted detail on the bell and also the Christmas tree. I just went over those with my crystal drops and then I'm adding some white lines to my candy cane and it really just brings them to life, I think. But that finishes my card, card number 21 of my Countdown to Christmas series. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll list everything down below if you guys are interested. And if you wanna see still shots, head on over to my blog. I'll put that link down in the description area as well. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me. We will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.